Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvellous video. Not only did it become the world's number one highest selling console of all time, but the PS2 also left its mark deep enough to become a standard addition to an average household's living room. The backward compatible 6th gen console was designed to rival Sega's Dreamcast, but went on to compete with Nintendo's GameCube and the Xbox. There are even stories of extreme fan devotion, such as a man legally changing his name to PlayStation 2 and marrying the console in a church. Though the marketing made it look like a mere spec that most would go on to overlook look, Sony's PS2 packed the 128-bit Emotion engine for its CPU. This opened the platform up to a world of new possibilities in an era that slowly but greatly contributed to building up to today's sharp micro-expression capturing graphics in game worlds that appear to be endless. Let's explore a few underrated titles that made the most out of this then cutting-edge CPU. Black Operating under the privileges of absolute deniability and anonymity, members of the tactical squad Black have only one broad objective, to protect the United States of America from both foreign as well as internal threats. In the first person, players play as Sergeant Jack Keller in his operations against the Seventh Wave, a gang and terrorist cell with hands-in-arms smuggling, terrorist attacks, and countless murders. You take on several missions with only two weapons and some explosives at your disposal. Higher difficulty levels present you with extra mission objectives to clear, and you can identify your objects associated with your goal by hovering your crosshair over them. Playing on higher than easy difficulty settings even award you with infinite ammo weaponry. The fast-paced, action-packed story packs a lot of emotion into its brief six-hour campaign gameplay but lacks a multiplayer mode. It's criticized for the action beneath the showy explosions and destruction being kind of basic and the whole thing feeling a bit simplistic and bland. However, the graphics on offer are brilliant and it's these very explosions and destructions that make the experience immersive. Some of the effects could rival even today games. Outside the lack of a multiplayer option, Black is an impressive title that offers everything that a first-person shooter should strive to offer. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks Kicking off as an aftermath of what players witnessed in the original Mortal Kombat, Shaolin Monks opens with Liu Kang, Kung Lao and more fighting Shang Tsung's forces at the evil Sorcerer's Island Fortress. While the two monks are distracted by Shang Tsung's henchman Goro, the Sorcerer escapes. The protectors of Earthrealm retreat to the Wu Shi Academy, but Liu Kang and Kung Lao don't make it in time. Trapped in Goro's lair, Raiden commands the two to fight their way through and make it to another portal, which leads them back to the Academy before the island crumbles. As you make it through the Air, playing as either of the monks, you're faced with waves of enemies before facing each level's boss. The action-adventure beat-em-up packs a multi-directional combat system, combo attacks, fatalities, interactive environments, and more. The amazing combo system is comparable to that of God of War, and the signature moves and fatalities that bring the franchise to life are retained. While the voice acting feels unnatural at times, and the co-op mode is criticized for not letting players continue playing alone in a different play session, the AI challenges you and encourages creative approaches to combat. The interactive environments and 3D gameplay, however, make for gloriously gory and interesting visuals. Batman Begins This game puts you in Bruce Wayne's Batsuit while closely following the events from the film. The story is told from a third-person perspective and challenges you to fight crime the way Batman does, using fear as your ultimate weapon. In addition to fear, most of Batman's cool high-tech gadgets are at your disposal in the fight against DC's classic antagonists, including the Scarecrow, Falcone, and Ra's al Ghul. Despite being a scripted title and a widely known story with only a few excluded movie scenes to offer, Batman Begins gives players everything they'd been missing in the games leading up to it. The stealth and interrogation aspects of the game are highly regarded, and it draws some inspiration from Splinter Cell and Burnout. Unlike other games that portray characters from their respective film casts, you can actually identify the characters here. Bale's Batman in the game is still as compelling as Nolan made him in the film. Eurocom's engine allows the game and its various levels in diverse environments to look beautiful. Even effects like Gotham's foggy, gloomy atmosphere are captured, and the animations are great while delivering consistent frame rates. Tenchu, Wrath of Heaven In the prosperous land of 16th century Japan, which is contested by a mysterious powerful sorcerer named Tenrai, supported by the Lords of Darkness and an army of evil ninjas, Lud Goda calls upon his skilled stealth assassin to mitigate the threat. You can play as one of three assassins, Rikimaru, the powerful ninja with a single sword, Ayami, the agile Kunoichi who fights with two short swords and acrobatic ability, or Tesu a doctor by day and vigilante assassin by night who kills with his bare fists. The narrative unfolds differently depending on your choice, but links to the game's storyline from each character's perspective. Unfortunately, this Tenchu entry is prone to the first game's poor camera angles curse. To make things worse, the weak AI and certain elements of sound design tend to occasionally burst your ninja bubble. However, in terms of gameplay, you'll find that this title plays like the original that came before Assassin's Creed. Stealth killing in missions is an exhilarating experience and really gives you a taste of what it's like to 
to be a ninja. The PS2 allowed a higher polygon count on each ninja's character model, and with commendable animation design, the whole assassination gig feels a lot more realistic. The same can be said for the game's environments and the minute effects that can be seen here. PSYOPs – The Mindgate Conspiracy This next game heavily draws inspiration from popular titles of its time while also adding and mixing its own unique ideas to deliver a special experience. Nick Scryer is a highly trained Psy operative who had his memories erased before infiltrating a terrorist organization. Things go south when the enemy captures him, and Nick must now escape this facility, fight enemies, get to the roots of his connection to this organization, and learn about the various powers his mind possesses all at once. While this story is sometimes considered confusing with a few plot holes, and some of its characters lack personality, the gameplay serves as its saving grace. You start only with Nick's most basic telekinesis ability, but the game opens you up to many more, like mind reading, mind control, pyrokinesis, and more. When you pair mastering these with a decent variety of weapons, you begin to realize why this one was GameSpot's best PS2 game of June 2002. The graphics on display scream well made and polished, the facial expressions and body animations feel natural, and it goes to show that Midway Games not only knew what they were doing, but were also far ahead of competitors competitors who were still figuring out 3D environment design. The Warriors The Warriors is a beat-em-up action-adventure title set in the 1970s, drawing on the lore of the 1979 film of the same name. The plot revolves around a Coney Island gang called the Warriors, and opens at a gang truce convention of sorts where someone tries to frame the Warriors for the assassination of Cyrus, the leader of New York's top gang, the Gramercy Riffs. Everything unfolds through missions, and the game covers events both before and after the film. Rockstar did it again with this exhilarating title, having players brawl with hordes of rival gang members. From attacking rival gangs, to committing crimes, robbing and looting stores to giving your gang orders while you steal cars for radios. This game offers a multitude of ways to keep yourself engaged. The combat mechanics are complex, running deep and featuring a mean combo system, which blends seamlessly with the emphasis on street brawls. Even though the game wasn't remade or given a follow-up due to certain parts of the script not being suitable for today's standards, Rockstar Games truly outdid themselves with this world. The 70s come to life in style, immersing players in the Warriors universe. If you love the movie, this game is an undoubtedly something you wouldn't want to miss out on. The Thing Yet another title based on a film, The Thing plays like a sequel to the 1982 film of the same name. This survival horror game is played in the third person and features squad-based gameplay. The plot centers on Captain Blake and follows him on his mission in Antarctica to investigate the whereabouts of a research team that stopped making contact. This is where you face the shape-shifting alien referred to in the title. No one can be trusted among the other survivors you encounter. The weapons this third-person shooter offers span various categories. Shooting also allows you to switch to first-person mode for better aim. In fighting the three broad categories of enemies, you can control Blake along with three NPC survivors whom you command in battle. The survivors comprise medics, engineers, and soldiers, and each of them contributes to the battle in their own way. The fear-trust system determines how scared survivors are and influences how readily they follow your orders. There's also an infection system to keep the experience refreshing and unpredictable, since survivors can turn into mutated versions of the thing. Unfortunately, the fear mechanic didn't live up to gamers' expectations, and the story lacks emotional depth as you part way with any survivors you meet before the next mission. Nonetheless, the tale it tells is chilling, and the graphics are sharp and well presented. These visuals, along with the sound design, do wonders in invoking a certain desperation that makes this survival horror worth playing. The Getaway Often labelled as a GTA clone, The Getaway transports you to London and covers events that unfold in a single day from two different perspectives. The first perspective is that of Mark Hammond, a former gang member whose wife is murdered and child kidnapped by goons from a rival gang. Mark must do the rival gang's bidding to ensure his son's safety. The second perspective follows Detective Frank Carter as he investigates the consequential chaos around London. Throughout the game, the narrative switches perspectives like a movie. The most significant achievement here is how realistic the game is. In all the combat and chaos, us, the game emphasizes the need to take cover and treat every bit of damage seriously. There's no map, HUD, or health bar. You have to judge the character's health by his visible wounds or movement speeds. The number of weapons you can carry was also limited. In comparison to GTA games available at the time, the getaway offered far superior graphics. The resolution and facial textures, along with the real-time depiction of London, were stunning. This game even had effects for blood splatter on walls. The slow pace allowed for better internal environments, resulting in a game far ahead of its time. Back then, the market was still new to open-world games, and GTA was all the craze, which led to the getaway slipping by unnoticed and receiving criticism for the lack of basic elements like an HUD or a map system.
The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. EA's loose adaptation of the LOTR trilogy came out in 2004 and presented itself as a tactical turn-based RPG. It's worth noting that this was only an adaptation of the film since EA only held game rights for adaptations of New Line cinema films and not J.R.R. Tolkien's literary works. The Third Age is structured around quests and, in typical RPG fashion, allows for third-person exploration in its 3D hub world, whereas the combat system is turn-based. It offers rewarding side quests in abundance and the battle system is complex, incorporating each character's unique skill set and various attributes. Each character's contribution to battles also determines how many experience points that character is rewarded with. This combat system follows a formula not unlike that of Final Fantasy X, and while this is a great recipe, it also tends to disappoint, given Final Fantasy's superiority. Though it makes for a good experience, die-hard RPG fans might find it to be a shallow entry-level RPG. It overcomes these shortcomings by positively shocking you. LOTR fans will experience a state of ecstasy during the combat. The grandeur of Middle-earth is brought to the Third Age, and it's an absolute gem to look at. It checks all the boxes, but it does it in a streamlined manner. The result, however, was one of the best-looking LOTR games of the time. Yakuza 2 When former Tojo clan Yakuza member Kazuma takes on a mission request to strengthen relations with a powerful group in Western Japan, he embarks on a journey that would shed light on this group's connection to a third Korean mafia group. You go on to discover how the events of your past lie within the confines of this gang triangle. Sega packed this one with an improved fighting engine and numerous new features as far as the previous one's gameplay was concerned. Yakuza 2 is more than its predecessor. The story is deeper. It introduces the human element and depicts a love story. They actually paid attention to what the fans said and tried to make the experience more immersive. The bleak world here has you moving through its darker alleys while you witness the Japanese nightlife and its beautiful but deadly cinematic adventures. The story kicks off to a slow start, which might be a deal-breaker for newcomers to the franchise, but it picks up the pace and only gets better. Hefty attention to detail can be noted in a multitude of elements, be it in-game stores or the glamorous nightlife, the NPC pedestrians that occasionally present side quests or anything else. Yakuza 2 will have your PS2 working hard while churning out consistent frame rates. The cinematics too are enhanced by these graphics and the game's thorough sound work. The Suffering The Suffering is what you get when you marry a scary, weapon-varied third-person action-adventure shooter like The Last of Us to a first-person prison-set survival horror like Outlast. You play as Talk, a man of few words facing death row for the murder of his wife and kids. Talk has no recollection of the event and only admitted to blacking out during the time of the murder as his legal defense. On the day of Talk's arrival, the island prison depicted is hit by what appears to be an earthquake and all hell breaks loose. A bunch of supernatural alien-like entities start slaughtering anyone they can get their hands on before disappearing into the shadows. The reception for this one was a bit of a mixed bag. Certain critics felt like the game showed promise but failed as a survival horror. However, the whole plan for this one was to focus more on the action while the narrative tells a creepy story through Kubrick's shining-like flashback segments. As you run around shooting and jumping, you'll notice a fair amount of environmental interaction. The minor aspects of this game add up to offer a realistic experience. The atmospheric storytelling is brilliant and the flashbacks and enemy designs are where we see the studio's hard work pay off. Rogue Ops Rogue Ops is another entry in the Splinter Cell-inspired series that wasn't much of a commercial success. However, don't let this fool you. The various tactical approaches players can adopt in missions make for some interesting playthroughs. Nikki Connors is a Phoenix recruit who joined the counter-terrorism efforts following the killing of her husband and their child at the hands of Omega-19, a ruthless terrorist group. You play as this dedicated woman as she fights for her revenge. This refreshing take on the standard stealth-based shooter recipe comes with cooler gadgets than the games it was originally compared to. As you clear missions, moving from one enemy base to another, you grow to enjoy the quick time event stealth kills. These kills are gruesome and give you a sense of satisfaction as you hear the enemy's bones crack. While the clumsy controls and poor voice acting disappoint, the pleasing click of your mostly silenced weapons keeps you wanting to move on to the next level. The enemy territories in Rogue Ops will have you solve puzzles, retrieve documents, and sabotage enemy operations. While the game sold mostly for how well-designed Nikki's character was, the smooth frame rate in its puzzling labyrinth-like environments keeps you wanting to progress her revenge story. The ability, as well as the need to sneak around unnoticed, make for some positively challenging gameplay. Samurai Western With its 16 different missions, Samurai Western stars Gojiro Kiryu as the protagonist, who just shows up at a deserted small town in Western America with a foreign blade hanging by his belt. This samurai is looking for Rando, his brother, who he aims to kill. Upon your arrival, you discover that the place is run by a local thug who goes by the name of Goldberg. It's this man's tyranny that makes our hero deviate from his mission and put an end to Goldberg's rule, bringing justice to the town. Samurai Western gives hack and slash a new meaning, with six different types 
types of samurai swords to choose from, each with its unique fighting style and an extensively vast character customization system, the game certainly has range. Its most appreciated mechanic is Gajiro's ability to dodge and deflect bullets with well-timed button interactions. It also possesses certain RPG elements, in that it allows you to upgrade various aspects of your stats. Strange as the whole ordeal sounds, Samurai Western packs a whole lot of energy, and all its goofy dialogues and enemies somehow make for a fun, comical experience, though this might not have been the intention. The film grain cutscenes look great, and if you're running it on a well-maintained PS2, the action is overwhelmingly good-looking. God Hand. Speaking of titles that blend Japanese and Western cultures, let's consider God Hand, which combines comedic elements from both. You can always rely on the folks at Capcom to keep it quirky. While the lore runs deep into the angels and demons side of things, the plot features Jean, a gruff drifter who valiantly tried to save a girl from some thugs and got his arm hacked off in the process. When Jean comes to, he's shocked to see his right arm intact. Additionally, he now possesses a legendary power, and his right arm is actually God's own. However, this comes with the burden of having a target on his back and leads to demonic legions trying to steal his power. The gameplay pays no mind to the story and only concerns itself with fighting. There are over a hundred moves to use, and these can range from simple light punches to skillful martial arts combos. This beat-em-up makes you forget about the flaws that lie in its controls, camera movements, and level design. It does so by sticking to the brawler formula, and a bunch of critics even admitted to this making it an addictive experience. While they lack personality on paper, the enemy and character designs in this one deserted environments somehow add a distinct charm to the overall experience. 10,000 Bullets The Tonio family is a huge criminal organization in Rome, and working for this syndicate is Crow. Playing as Crow? you can make time pass slower by accessing his gunslinger ability. This was something passed down to him through his mother, who was killed when he was still a kid. After his mum was taken from him, the Tonio family leader took him in and raised him as one of their own. Crow trains his years away and aims to bring justice to his mum's killer. The gameplay feels like a nod to the Matrix films, and you follow one of four playable characters in the third person, fighting enemies in unique environments. While storytelling is among the game's weaker aspects due to certain cutscenes lacking proper work, 10,000 Bullets features a whole lot of action packed goodness. The time manipulation abilities made these action sequences fun to play, and even led to a few suggesting that it felt like a 3D version of beat-em-up side-scroller Beautiful Joe. The stages you have these shootouts in are sharp, well-rendered environments, and the effects add style to the game's character. This dynamic range of colors is definitely not something you want to miss out on. Freedom Fighters In this alt-history title, New York City has been invaded and overrun by forces of the Soviet Union that won the Cold War. Players take the mantle of Christopher Chris Stone as a plumber gone rebel group leader. Under your orders, the resistance movement fights the forces of the Union in the battle for New York's freedom. Chris's mission doesn't end there. He must also find and free his brother. The story, though it could have packed a bit more in terms of substance and played out predictably, is one you find yourself easily invested in. You fight the Soviet forces and take to the streets while controlling Chris and squads of teammates who become your followers. The Friendly's AI is excellent and makes fighting in a squad and using different tactics fun. On the other hand, the enemy AI could have used some more work. The Charisma system has you gain points by performing actions that benefit your band of rebels. You can use these points to recruit up to 12 squad members and command them with simple prompts like follow, defend, or attack. When you place this interactive gameplay in Freedom Fighters' heavily detailed immersive environments with a sound setup that packs realistic combat noises, you've nothing short of a great game your hands. The only problem with it is that there aren't enough hours to spend in this chaotically beautiful alt world. Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 Tokyo Extreme Racer 3, or Shotoku Battle Zero One as Japan calls it, was the last time followers of the franchise got to race around Japan's highways. The story is set two years after the events of Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero after the 13 Devils were defeated. Chaos followed soon after this hierarchy was broken. Racers from Nagoya and Osaka joined the mix. You must race the first level best of these cities and clear the first stage of the game before you get to the second stage, which allows you to race in the city of your choice. This is when you unlock the entirety of the map, and the gameplay progression becomes more open-ended. Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 was the first game in the franchise that featured real vehicles by manufacturers from North America, Japan, and Europe. There's a great depth of customization that it offers for your cars, and with the game's stellar graphics and long story mode, you get a good amount of time behind the wheel to admire how polished the whole thing is. Sure, the gameplay can be repetitive at times, and the handling model feels a little bit floaty to cruise around with, but the expanded world, weather conditions, textures, and an upgraded physics engine make for a breathtaking experience. Way of the Samurai 2 
Starting off strong on the emotional front, Way of the Samurai 2 opens with its protagonist starving. Players may pick either a male hero or a female one. When you pass out just as you make it to the gates of Amahara, a trading town on an island, a young child comes to your rescue, offering to split her rice ball with you. Gangs have started to plague the city with violence, and the government does nothing but suppress justice. This Edo period story presents you, a ronin, with the ability to save the town's fate. Among its many highs, the combat shines bright, allowing players to get a taste of traditional sword fighting gameplay while experiencing life in game, the samurai way. Combat mechanics are implemented from the first game and have been tuned to make the experience a new one. The stance breakers for every weapon, a convenient block and parry mechanic, and fresh instant kill segments are a few of these. You'll find quite a few gamers complaining about the time it takes to load, weak voicing, and the plain story. However, to those who dare to accept these flaws, this game rewards generously. The animations are fluid, and the enemies, fun to combat. The imagery captured in its larger playing area is glorious. Throw in the new weaponry, and you'll be surprised by how much of a must-play it is. The Bouncer. The Bouncer is an action-packed hand-to-hand combat beat-em-up RPG that casts three bouncers at the center of its plot. When a young girl who goes by Dominique is kidnapped by Mikado group thugs who break in through the roof, players must choose to play as either Scion, Ku, or Volt and work with the team in an effort to rescue her. With control similar to Dream Factory's other work, Tobal, the Bouncer incorporates four types of attacks based on where you hit the enemy, along with its special moves. The blocking mechanic here is quite unique and functions on an undisclosed defense point system. What it means is that after your character has blocked a couple of blows, you lose the ability to block and must clear the rest of the fight without blocking. This highly anticipated release ended up disappointing a few. Certain features, like the game's destructible environment, were promised in the trailer at E3, but never made it to the game. Moreover, the camera angle sometimes became an issue in narrow confinements of play. However, the character design is amazing, especially in the game's CGI cutscenes. The flicker-free graphics were topped off with a smooth, glossy filter that gives the visuals a slight glow and makes every bit appear more polished. You can't help but enjoy fighting in this well-developed trophy PS2 title. The Mark of Cree, yet another title that boasts a variety of highly detailed environments. The Mark of Cree tells the story of a great noble warrior by the name of Rao and how he comes to be a well-known heroic warrior. The story will have you fighting forces from a darker plane of existence in the quest to save the world from the power of an evil spell. This spell has the potential to unleash great suffering on the land leaving it vulnerable to attacks from evil entities. Assisting you in your quest is Kuzo, your trusty spirit guide who can scout ahead during gameplay and give you a lay of the land before you engage. The Mark of Cree combines stealth, violent combat, and strategic planning to present players with a lot to experience in its beautiful fantasy environments. Its graphics engine makes the title look as good as God of War, in spite of this one coming out three years sooner than God of War did. Its charm lies in the originality of the game. While the boss fights are criticized for being repetitive, the combat and stealth systems, its storyline, the sound design, and its effects are highly regarded. Dark Watch. When the paths of daunting genres like horror, steampunk, and western cross, you're probably playing as Jericho Cross in Dark Watch, Curse of the West. The titular Dark Watch is a secret organization as old as humanity itself and works to protect humankind from evil incarnate. Jericho is an outlaw gunslinger in the Wild West turned a fresh Dark Watch recruit. When Jericho encounters a powerful vampire and is himself bitten, he's given no choice but to join Dark Watch in saving the world along with his own soul. The first person Dark Watch experience packs a lot into it. Advanced tech, deadly assault vehicles, vampire abilities, a zombie horse, and augmented weaponry from the West. There's even a reputation system that influences your abilities. The controls alone gave players a bang for their buck, and while the gameplay isn't all that unique, all these aspects of it look very cool. The steampunk gothic aesthetic makes for a unique game that you can get lost in. The power system and multiplayer gameplay too have been praised deeply. In its creepy caves, cemeteries, dungeons, crypts and more, you'll find distinct types of areas to explore. The gothic architecture on some of its buildings will give you the chills. Say what you will, Dark Watch does what it does with style and charm. Red Dead Revolver This third-person action-adventure shooter by Rockstar Games, Red Dead Revolver was the studio's first step into the massive Red Dead universe that everyone has at least heard of, if not experienced, today. Set in 1880, Red Dead Revolver has you play as the bounty hunter Red Harlow for most of the game, along with five other playable characters in certain missions. The narrative even opens with a classic Western film-like intro and is a tale of vengeance. When teenage Red's house is attacked by bad guys looking to take his father's gold for themselves, Red barely escapes with his life 
and his father's revolver, having lost both his parents. This is where the flashback prologue ends, and we jump into a grown-up red shoes as a ruthless bounty hunter. This game is where the franchise first introduced the Deadeye ability mechanic that we witness in today's RDR games. The title receives a hefty amount of criticism in the fact that this story lacks grit and that its multiplayer mode doesn't have much to offer, but the action is sassy and fun. The visuals are near perfect in the game's settings. The experience is refreshing and will make you want to come back to the game and unlock everything that it has to offer. The Wild West is brought to life creatively, and the visuals in the game tie in perfectly with the sound of your revolver as you rid the sands of scum. Zone of the Enders, the second runner. This mech combat title has you take control of quick-moving robots in the fight against an evil militaristic faction, while showcasing new tactics, maneuvers, and its fresh weapon lineup. Kojima and Konami created this one as a sequel to the first game and have the players control the same orbital frame, Jehuti, only this time it's loaded with cooler weapons. The narrative follows Dingo, Egret, and two years have passed since the first game's events occurred. Dingo used to work with Barum, a militant Mars organization, and his former leader wants Dingo back. When you decline the offer, the leader, No Man, shoots Dingo, only to be saved and put in Jehuti by Ken Marinaris. The title was a short one, and it isn't always presented the way it should be. While these qualities give it a bad rep, the combat was much faster, the mech's ability reached new highs, and the enemy models were not only better designed, but also presented you with a variety of different looking bad guys. The 3D elements and the anime-like character depictions go hand in hand, making this one of the best looking games available on the PS2. Dingo even performed better than the prequel's Leo Stenbuck and instead of philosophy, the focus lies on the action. Headhunter Redemption Amuse and Sega's Headhunter Redemption is a third-person action-adventure shooter and the second installment of the series. It's set 20 years after the previous Headhunter game and tells Jack Wade's compelling story as you fight to maintain peace and harmony in a dystopian world. Dawn the mantle of a Headhunter in a post-Bloody Mary virus world. This world's characterized by extreme degrees of consumerism, a heinous criminal underworld, and a treacherous media environment. Alongside your mentee, Lisa X, you happen to find evidence that leads you to believe the world is at risk and play to save this dystopian reality from the threat that looms over its head. True to the dystopian sci-fi formula, the futuristic environments here pack great amounts of machinery into their design. To make it look even cooler than it did, the intentionally dull space age resembling colors blend perfectly with the lighting and polished glow in the game. This one is underrated mainly due to its shortcomings like the weak AI design, unnecessary puzzles, and flawed targeting system. Its selling point lies in how engaging the premise is, and its creativity in exploring complex characters and conflicts within society. Society. True Crime New York City True Crime NYC puts players in the shoes of mob boss Isaiah the King Reed's son, Marcus Reed. Marcus is a former gangster from New York who was running his dad's empire. A police officer whom Marcus considers a dear friend covers for him when things go bad and makes him promise to leave the life behind him. Marcus listens and goes on to become a cop. He rose to the rank of detective and on his first day he saw his mentor lose his life. This makes him resort to his old ways in the hunt for his mentor's killer and chase after the mole that indirectly contributed to the murder. Another a title that can be considered an open-world GTA clone. The gameplay in True Crime NYC's missions fits under one of three broad categories. These include driving, shooting, and fighting. There are also side missions that not only let you participate in illegal street racing and fight clubs, but also let you recruit secret informers. Aside from being dismissed as a GTA clone, the game fell short because it took no risks. The same simplicity that's praised for an accurate portrayal of a police officer's general duties becomes a disadvantage for those who seek out-of-the-box entertainment. The mechanics are far better than than the preceding title, Streets of LA. The way this title recreates a 25 square mile GPS accurate Manhattan was nothing short of an achievement for a game that came out when this one did. Marvelous Verdict, having explored each of these 25 underrated titles, along with hundreds of other games that we folks at Marvelous stopped and paid attention to, two things become abundantly clear. The first is that no matter how old the world's number one best-selling gaming console is, no matter how outdated people might deem it to be, the PS2's graphic ability and its capability, thanks to the Emotion Engine, are not to be taken for granted. The second highlights the sad fact that while some lacked in minor areas, a majority of these 25 games were far too ahead of their time for their own good. While members of the gaming community look back in awe, the ones before us paid no mind to their innovative genius. Nonetheless, you can always rely on Marvelous as connoisseurs of the niche, and rest assured that we're not going to let a single game that deserves your attention slip by unnoticed. Stay tuned for more eye-opening content, and do tell us which of these you enjoyed the most in the comments section.